Hi friends, this is Amanda. I'm back with another lettering tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a 3D block letter using the brushes from the lettering toolkit for Procreate that's available on designcuts.com. Let's dive in! Before we dive into the tutorial, I just wanted to let you know that I have left the hex codes for the colors used in this tutorial in the video description. I've also left a link to the lettering toolkit if you wanted to grab the brushes for yourself. They're available on designcuts.com. And I've also included a link to the review that I did last week, touching on some of my favorite brushes from this brush pack if you're interested in learning a little bit more about these uh, Procreate brushes. Okay, let's get started on the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make a new piece of artwork or a new canvas. So click the plus sign and then screen size. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is sketch out a block letter A. I'm going to use this medium purple color. And in the lettering toolkit brushes, I'm going to use the ballpoint pen. So it's under the LT pens folder. And I'm just going to quickly make a block letter A. Okay. And if you're wondering what this stamp is that I used in the beginning. That is actually from uh, the lettering, forget, the letter builder uh, brush set. So it's um, a bunch of different stamps for uh, italic and condensed and just for building block letters. Pretty cool. So the next thing I want to do is make a uh, out outline of, make a duplicate of the outline for this A, but make it in a lighter color. So what I'm gonna do is select this layer by clicking on the, or tapping on the thumbnail, selecting the select. I'm gonna come up to the color wheel and I'm gonna choose this light purple. And then I'm gonna come back to the layers tab. I'm gonna add a new layer. I'm gonna click on the thumbnail and I'm going to fill layer. So now I've got a lighter outline and then I've got my original layer. So on the original layer, I'm actually going to come back to that regular color and I'm going to fill it. So now if I toggle that outline off, I just have a filled layer and this is going to drive me nuts. So I'm going to get rid of this little stray. Okay back to this. So now we've got the lighter outline and it, the filled in color or filled in A. So I'm going to actually name these so I can keep them straight. So the purple is going to be our base and then the outline is going to be outline. Okay so my next step is going to be to create an inner shadow so that it looks like the outline, the lighter color, is actually raised from the surface of the purple A. So to do that, I'm going to select the base layer. I'm going to come up to my color wheel and I'm going to select, I have a darker purple, make a new layer, fill the layer with that darker purple. Then I'm going to make a duplicate of this base because I'm gonna use this as a guide to actually erase away this layer, this um, layer three that I'm gonna rename to Inner Shadow. Okay, so on this duplicate of my base color, or of my base A, I'm going to move it out to the side a bit so that now you can see that I've got this purple line, this darker purple line. So I'm actually going to erase away everything else in 
everything else on this inner shadow layer. And the way I'm going to do that is by selecting this layer and then turning off the visibility and then coming down, clicking on the inner shadow layer, not selecting it, just clicking on it to make it active. Come up to the eraser and then I'm just going to erase away everything on that layer but it's leaving behind that little sliver that was peeking through because it's using this upper layer as a template because it's selected. So even though it's turned off, this layer is still selected. Okay, so I'm gonna deselect. Now I can actually get rid of this. I don't need it anymore. So, bye-bye. Okay, so now I've got a little bit of a shadow, but as you can see, it doesn't quite go all the way up there, so I'm gonna fix that real quick before we go further. Okay. So this inner shadow is still a little bit harsh, so I'm going to actually blur it a little bit and reduce the opacity. And the way to do that is make sure that that layer is selected. Go over to the magic wand. First, I'm gonna do a Gaussian blur. I'm only going to do maybe 8%, 7%, seven, let's do 7.5%. So that gives it a nice little blur here. So it's starting to look like a shadow. I am going to drop the opacity just a little bit. And then now you can see, so we've got, we've got the shadow, but it is extending outside the border of that white outline or the light purple outline. So the way to fix that is to click on the thumbnail on the inner shadow and select clipping mask. So now you can see that the shadow is inside. Now we are going to add an extrusion to this A. So we're gonna add, we're gonna make it look three dimensional, more so. So the way to do that is select the base layer, create a new layer. I'm gonna drag it down underneath and I'm going to change the color to this navy. I actually wanna make it a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna save it for later. And then I'm gonna fill that layer and I'm going to drag it down to make it look like it's 3D, but as you can see, these corners don't meet up. So I'm gonna fill those in, come back to the ballpoint pen, and just fill in these areas. I'm gonna make sure I'm on the right layer, which is the extrusion layer. The next thing I want to do is add some texture to the inside of this A here. So I'm actually going to create, I'm going to select our base layer. I'm going to make a new layer. Now notice it's within this clipping mask. I'll show you why I want it like that in just a minute, but we're going to add texture to it. So I'm going to choose this obnoxious pink color. I'm gonna come into the, so we could do a shader, or I think let's do this uh, decorator. And let's do this gradient. So this is a dot gradient. So what, I'm, what I've got here is, so I've got our base layer selected. I've got an, I'm on a new layer that's within this clipping mask. And the brush is set all the way to 100%. So what I'm gonna do is just come in here and tap. And so now I've got this gradient that's only within the base layer because that was what was selected. Now another way to do that is if you didn't want to keep your layers, you could just come right to this base layer and select alpha lock and put the texture right on top of it. However, that would get rid of your base layer as it is. It wouldn't just be solid purple anymore. So I like to keep my layers separate. So if I ever want to delete something or go back and recreate something, I haven't lost my originals. 
So the reason we have it, I still wanted it within that clipping mask is because when you come over here and you look at this texture, you can see that the shadow is over the texture. So if I brought this layer up and it's not in the clipping mask, you can see that the shadow is now uh, underneath the texture. So I want the texture to be underneath the shadow and still a clipping mask on top of the um, base. I can deselect that. So now the next thing is adding some shading and texture to the extrusion layer. So we're kind of going to do the same thing. There's no clipping mask involved, but we're going to select the extrusion layer and make a new layer on top. And I'm going to come down to this navy color. And for this one, I'm going to use one of these shader textures. So let's try, let's go with the cross hatching. Okay, so my last step is to add a little bit of a shadow underneath the A. So let's select our extrusion layer. And let's choose, well, let's leave that dark color. Add a new layer. So this is gonna go behind and fill layer. And I'm gonna do a motion blur on it. Let's only do 15%. Drag it into place. And then I'm going to do a Gaussian blur on it. and reduce the opacity. Now, it really looks 3D, but I'm going to still add a background and I'm gonna center this A because it's driving me nuts, it's not centered. But now that I've got all these layers, I need to actually select them all as a group so I can move the, everything together. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the top layer and then I'm just gonna swipe underneath on these additional layers. Come up and hit my cursor and move it to be centered. Now I'm gonna add a layer for the background. I could just change this background color, but I'm gonna actually add a layer. And let's fill it with that. Well, actually, let's fill it with a light color. And then let's add another layer on top and let's do this darker color. And let's choose, in graffiti, let's choose this spray paint and then I'm just gonna color and adjust the opacity and if you wanted you could even do a little bit of a Gaussian blur unless you want the crisp texture. And that is how you make a 3D letter using the brushes from the lettering toolkit for Procreate. If you have any questions about the tutorial or in general, make sure to leave me a comment. You can also find the accompanying blog post for this tutorial on my website, viamandak.com. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, 
make sure you leave me a thumbs up and also hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. That's it for today. I'll catch you next time.